Imagine we want to convert three-fourths into a decimal. So, the key strategy is to use our traditional division symbol you know. We place the four outside, that's our divisor, and the three inside, that's our dividend. Now we ask, how many times does four go into three? Well, four doesn't go into three because four is bigger than three. So what do we do now? Looks like we need a little extra help. Yep, that's why the decimal point comes in. We place a decimal point after the three and don't forget to put a zero right after it. But wait, why are we allowed to do that? Great question. Adding a decimal and a zero does not change the value of the number. Three is the same as 3.0 or even 3.00, they all mean the same thing. We just add the point zero so we can keep dividing past the decimal point. Now we continue. And guess what? We also place a decimal point above the division line in the quotient. Now that extra zero we added lets us keep dividing until there's no remainder. Pretend there's no decimal point for a moment. Now we treat 3.0 as 30. Let's ask. How many times does 4 go into 30? The answer is 7 times. Because 4 times 7 equals 28, that fits just right. If we tried 4 times 8, it would be 32, and that's too big. Oops. So, we write 7 inch the quotient, that's the answer on top, right after the decimal point. 7 times 4 equals 28. Now we subtract. 30 minus 28 equals 2. We still have a remainder of 2, so we're not done yet. You may be confused with the 2 thinking that do we have to add decimal point right after the 2 and put 0 and start diving? No, because all the process happened in the dividend place. So that is okay. If we have a remainder, we just add a zero to the dividend and bring it down to continue the division process. This new zero comes from the decimal side and it helps us keep dividing. Now we bring it down to the two and we have 20. Now ask, how many times does four go into 20? That's easy, five times. Because four times five equals 20, now subtract. 20 minus 20 equals zero. No remainder, that means we're finished. So the final answer to three fourths as a decimal is 0 0.75. Look at this one. Let's convert two fifths into a decimal. Now we ask, how many times does five go into two? Well, five doesn't go into two because five is bigger than two. We place a decimal point after the two and don't forget to add a zero right after it. Now, if we ignore the decimal for a second, 2.0 becomes 20. Let's ask again. How many times does five go into 20? That's easy four times because five times four equals 20 perfect. So, we write four in the quotient right after the decimal point. Now subtract. 20 minus 20 equals zero. No remainder, we're done. So the final answer is, two fifths as a decimal is 0 0.4. Not too hard, right? Let's try another. As always, how many times does eight go into one? Well, eight doesn't go into one because eight is bigger than one. So what do we do now? We bring in our secret weapon, the decimal point. We place a decimal point right after the one inside the division bar, making it one point. Then we add a zero right after the decimal point and voila, now it looks like 10. Also, place a decimal point in the quotient, the answer area, right above the decimal point in the dividend. Just to make sure you don't forget at the end, did you get that? So now, instead of asking how many times eight goes into one, we ask, how many times does eight go into 10? The answer is one time. We write one inch the quotient right after the decimal point. Next multiply, eight times one 
equals 8. Now subtract. 10 minus 8 equals 2. We still have a remainder of 2 not done yet. To continue, we bring down another 0. This 0 comes from the dividend. We bring down this 0 next to the 2, making the new number 20. Now ask again. How many times does 8 go into 20? The answer is 2 times. Write 2 inch, the quotient. Multiply. 8 times 2 equals 16. Subtract. 20 minus 16 equals 4. Still a remainder of 4, keep going. Bring down another 0. From the dividend, place it next to the 4, making 40. Ask, how many times does 8 go into 40? That's 5 times. Write 5 inch the quotient. Multiply. 8 times 5 equals 40. Subtract. 40 minus 40 equals 0. No remainder, we're done. So 1 eighth as a decimal is 0 0.125. Imagine we want to convert 5 eighths into a decimal. As always ask, how many times does 8 go into 5? Well, 8 is bigger than 5, so it doesn't go in yet. No worries. This is where the decimal point comes to the rescue. We place a decimal point right after the 5 inside the division bar and add a 0 after it. Now it's 5.0. We imagine, or as you prefer, we're pretending 5.0 is 50. Ask, how many times does 8 go into 50? That's 6 times, because 8 times 6 equals 48. Write 6 inch the quotient right after the decimal point. Now, subtract. 50 minus 48 equals 2. Still got a remainder. Keep going. Bring down another 0. This 0 comes from the dividend. We bring down this 0 to the 2, making the new number 20. Ask again. How many times does 8 go into 20? That's 2 times. Because 8 times 2 equals 16. Write 2 inch the quotient. Subtract. 20 minus 16 equals 4. Still not done. Bring down another 0. Bring down the next 0 from the dividend, placing it next to the 4, making 40. Ask, how many times does 8 go into 40? That's 5 times, because 8 times 5 equals 40. Write 5 inch the quotient, subtract. 40 minus 40 equals 0. So, 5 eighths as a decimal is 0 0.625. And that's how we turn fractions into decimals one step at a time. Thanks for watching Pink Grade. Keep practicing and you'll get even better at math. Remember, stay pink.